welcome to epg patshala uh, this is uh, the module on rothman's models of community practice a uh, part of the course on community organization for the subject social work education i am monishri vyas uh, professor in the center for community organization and development practice in the school of social work at tata institute of social sciences mumbai um in uh, it is hoped that this uh lesson will help you to become familiar with the conceptual framework of rothman's models of community organization and the interrelations between the three models and uh, also the relevance of understanding these models for community practice uh as you know uh and we have discussed in uh, an earlier lesson a uh, community organization aims at engaging with communities to develop local leadership and capacities to work towards a progressive change in their social political economic and personal conditions and there are several ways of organizing communities which depend on a range of factors such as situations the degree of change the participants and so on so uh, a model is essentially a theoretical construct which uh, encapsulates the complexities of the field it uh, details certain components of practice and uh, in a sense it really uh, it really seeks to explain what the field is about um for certain practitioners the mod mo models uh, as theoretical constructs can be very useful to conceptualize practice they can help to find answers to you know what is to be done in the field and explanations of what is happening in the field one of the critiques of uh, models and constructs such as this is also that they tend to simplify the complexities of the field but uh, to understand uh, this dynamic let us start with the discussion on rothman's models of co Uh, this was in the 1960s that Rothman Jack Rothman introduced three uh, models of community organization practice uh, this work of rothmans is extremely critical for uh, the study of community practice because it has formed the base of further theorizing on this subject and all the subsequent work on uh, model development has actually taken place based on the work of rothman in the 1960s interestingly after his initial work uh, he himself reviewed and revised uh, the models and and uh, the redux that he came up with uh, uh, some years later is also discussed in this lesson the key models of uh, co as explicated by rothman are locality development social planning and social action locality development is uh, uh, basically about uh, community participation and uh, it talks about the fact that collective participation by the community of the community in decision making processes from the time of deciding the goals to achieving the goals this is extremely critical in community work and uh, as a framework it includes self help development um uh, democratic processes local leadership and voluntary participation uh, voluntary cooperation now uh, to understand the nature of locality development uh, one i would just like to point out the key um, aspects the first is that the community is at the center of the change effort the social worker or the community organizer would essentially be a facilitator to the process and may in fact be from within the community itself and the emphasis is on self directed change by the community so you find traces of this model and this type of community practice in contemporary times as well um the strength of the model and the idea discussed in the model is that it is uh, uh, that it is uh, community led and that it would lead to community empowerment because it's basically about developing their capacities and their ability for change the second model of social planning uh, is different because 
there is a clear role for social workers and external agents to participate in the change effort. And it's, it refers to problem solving and a technical approach for community development. It's, uh, social planning is generally adopted in cases such as delinquency, mental health, housing, health, education, uh, social welfare. So these are the sectors in which one would find social planning actually being uh, very predominantly used. It aims at a rational planned and controlled change uh, of the conditions in which the community lives. So uh, planning, uh, rationally uh, you know, identifying needs and matching needs and resources, uh, these are the core elements of social planning as outlined by Rothman. And there is minimal scope actually for community participation. But though you would find that there are spaces for participation by communities, but that's not really so much the idea because the character of social planning as a model is also more technocratic in nature. So in these type of spaces, you will find uh, experts and people who have a, a maybe a formal education, knowledge of that sector, those issues who are engaged in planning and executing the process of uh, change. But they would have perhaps uh, participation of the community. Uh, it could be more to a limited extent. Another feature of social planning is that uh, uh, it may take place, uh, the social workers role, the community organizers role would be located in a context where social work is perhaps a secondary goal of that, of that uh, situation or that organization. For example, to you know, give you a simple example, uh, social workers in schools, in hospitals, in health set settings, where the goal of that institution uh, is to work towards better health for the citizens or the constituencies, better education for uh, you know the students uh, and that section of and sections of communities, and social work and the presence of social worker is to enhance that uh, that primary goal so the location of the social worker in these settings is different from uh, what you would find in other models the third model of social action it focuses on the significance of social justice and democracy in community development initiatives this model also gives a more political edge to community organization as a field of practice because uh, it emphasizes the participation and the active involvement of marginalized people uh, who organize at community level to bring about radical changes in the social institutions that are governing their lives. So whether it is through challenging existing systems, existing policies and laws, and therefore contesting them, uh, or whether it is to engage in advocacy for introduction of new policies and uh, measures for the uh, disadvantaged and marginalized populations, or whether it is to engage in conflict with systems and with uh, authorities to demand certain kinds of change, uh, the social action model is based on a close connection with people. So whether it is through procedural action or advocacy, or through direct action and maybe more conflict-based approaches, the social action model emphasizes the fact that issues close to people's lives are taken up with certain extent of involvement by the people or with a large scale of involvement and ownership by the communities that are actually affected by those issues. Now, these three models, uh, if we look at uh, you know, as an overview, we see that they have very distinct features and uh, they tell you in a very succinct way what, uh, what that type of community practice is actually all about. Uh, in reality, however, uh, these models are not so distinct and they're often overlapping and constantly borrowing from each other. And uh, so uh, what emerges from these uh, models is, is uh, uh, the complexity that you might have mix of models or you might find certain organizations and practitioners using certain model at a particular point of time and then another model when they are working on another issue. So for example, uh, 
uh, an organization that is working on um, say education, uh, the, the question of education for uh, disadvantaged populations or particular constituency such as children on the streets might be engaged in actually involving the children and working to get resources to address the needs, the education needs of that set of, of children that they are working with and adopt a more social planning based approach. But if required, they could be part of advocacy initiative to actually demand certain initiatives and policies from the state in response to the to the needs of this section of the population. So you can see a mixing of two models such as social planning and social action on a particular issue by a certain set of practitioners and an organization. So this is uh, this element of the mixing and phasing of the models uh, lends a more uh, more dynamism to Rothman's models and has been discussed uh, in this manner in some of the literature that you will come across when you're reading uh, on the models. Very broadly, you will find that uh, in Rothman's work, uh, the three models of uh, community organization are detailed along the lines of certain variables or certain parameters. Uh, these are firstly the goal. So what is the goal of community practice in a given situation? The second is what's the strategy that is adopted uh, for work uh, in a particular situation on that issue, what are the tactics and techniques that are used, what, are the, what is the role of the practitioner in that context because these would also differ depending on several factors and the whole situation in which practice is actually being taken, what's the medium of change, what kind of an orientation uh, exists in the practice. Uh, what's the boundary, what's the client or constituency, who is, who is actually being worked with, so who's the focus of the practice and the change effort, what's the interest of the community, what is the conception of the client population or the constituency that one is working with and uh, what are the strategies for empowerment uh, that you find in, in this particular model. So uh, the models are delineated based on certain variables which you will read about in the uh, lesson that is detailed in the write-up. So to uh, summarize what I have just spoken, um, I would like to say that uh, Rothman's work is extremely central to uh, conceptualizing and theorizing about community organization because it has been the basis of much work in subsequent years. It has really encapsulated the complexities of community organization practice effectively within a three model framework and then it has been reworked in uh, to adapt to uh, the dynamics of, of practice. Um, what we need to remember, I mean in conclusion I'd like to state that what you need to remember about study of models is that, you know, uh, apart from theorizing and, and uh, developing knowledge about the field of community organization and the complexities of the field of community organization, uh, such models are extremely critical in enabling the practitioner and the student to actually conceptualize practice. Uh, I have found very often that, you know, in the field and in discussions in the classroom that, you know, if you are asked to talk about community organization in your field of practice or in the fieldwork setting where you are located, then uh, practitioners and students tend to be extremely descriptive, giving a lot of details about what is happening in the field, what they have done, how they have gone about strategizing for practice and many, many details that come into a narrative of this kind. While such a narrative is rich in details and extremely valuable for various reasons, um, one can tend to get lost in all of these details. So it's necessary that we are able to conceptualize our practice along certain key parameters so that we are able to bring in the complexities into a framework that is uh, straight, simple and easy to understand and to grasp. And I think that the models uh, by Rothman and other scholars, which we will discuss later. I think these models really give us good frameworks with which we can approach the field and understanding the complexities and the dynamics of the field. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Rothman's models uh, may be found I mean, in practice. 
you may find these types of uh, community work actually interconnected and mixing with each other. So when you look at uh, interweaving of the models and try to understand uh, models from that point of view, uh, you will uh, you will come across what um, you will come you will encounter the manner in which they connect with each other and and what the implications are of that kind of practice. So by combining models, community practitioners can develop an appropriate composite mode of intervention that incorporates the features of more than one model. So if one is looking to models to direct and shape practice, then uh, uh, once we recognize the fact that they can be connected and they can actually be mixed and you may find different modes of practice, it will enable you to bring in more aspects into your uh, work and the direction of your work. So uh, let's look at bimodal interventions where you find more than one of these models actually in, in practice. So uh, the first would be of development and action, these two models together. The most appropriate example of this type of intervention mode of community practice is perhaps the community organizing interventions. And uh, you know where you find an element of working closely with women with certain constituencies, certain sets of communities and to build their own uh, abilities, to build their skills, to address their issues through their own initiatives and at the same time taking action and engaging in advocacy on their issues. And so uh, uh, feminist organizing is really a good example of uh, the connection with the community and the direct contact with them which is a feature of the development locality development model and and social action where the goal is towards certain kind of change and towards empowering outcomes for the community the second uh, bimodal intervention could be of uh, social action and social planning so the action planning bimodal uh, you know, you may get to see in consumer protection programs or, uh, you know, which were, these programs were aimed at exposing the exploitation of consumers by corporates and government. And uh, you, would, you would find therefore that both social action intervention and also social planning intervention are seen side by side and they go along with each other. Essentially, the, this, this type of practice would imply that there is a concrete agenda that the community or the organization or a set of people have come together with a certain agenda. There has been an element of planning in, in building that coalition or building that collective. And then there is there are goals which are aimed at uh, change or legislative reform uh, towards which that coalition or collective or set of organizations actually works. It's, it would commonly be found in, in uh, most countries where there is a fair degree of uh, you know, lobbies and, and sets of people and constituencies already organized or coming together for a particular purpose. The third uh, example of this is advocacy and planning. And um, uh, here you find that you know, rights-based advocacy organizations engaging uh, the services of uh, professionals. Uh, uh, to prepare funding proposals or getting government support for their advocacy movement. So, uh, you know, so there is an agenda and there's a conscious effort to draw on expertise to support the agenda and that initiative. Now, these professionals may not be permanent employees of the organization or uh, connected with the organization on a long term basis, but they play an important role in formulating the plans. So, with a certain uh, goal, uh, expertise is drawn on to help to achieve the agenda or the objectives more effectively. In the, in the uh, bimodal intervention on with planning and development, uh, you know, you find that there are em enterprise and empowerment zones uh, which aim at, the, at building the capacity of local minority communities by encouraging them to come, you know, come together to start their own businesses. So, um, uh, building on community resources and uh, interests and skills to develop enterprise, 
through drawing on other resources and planning for effective use of uh, expertise and resources from outside. And there's a strong emphasis on building the community agency and collective participation. But it's not entirely led by the community. So there is, these programs will involve technical experts from government and from uh, private sector for designing the program and the processes. So um, I think an uh, interesting example of this in, uh, uh, in the Indian context could also be uh, planning processes, urban planning exercises, where there's a strong element of community involvement, community voice, and people being uh, mobilized to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, and organized to have a voice and to put forth their views but uh, through an active interface with experts and, and planning uh, authorities and uh, individuals who are part of the process from the side of the government. Now, uh, uh, what we have discussed so far are the bimodal interventions. You also find uh, certain instances where you will find all of the three models actually merging together in practice. And these could be together in at one given point of time on a particular issue, you will find that there's a strong element of community participation and ownership of an issue. There is an involvement of experts and planning that is very consciously evident. And the community or people uh, who the constituencies who are at the center of this whole effort are also ready to uh, mobilize for advocacy initiatives if it is required. So, uh, conceptually and in the field, it is possible to find all of these three models coming together and influencing the direction and the nature of the practice uh, in a given situation. These models uh, also pose certain dilemmas in terms of the aspects and the features, which are a contradiction uh, of sorts. Uh, let's discuss a few of them. So, um, uh, say for example, if you're talking about locality development, the idea that there is a community which, you know, with which one works or the community that's working with a sense of direction and purpose and developing its capacities and seeking to participate more actively in its own change and transformation. Now, in that, in such an idea of locality development, you will, you may find that most locality development programs are often funded by external agencies and not the community. So there's already an external influence on, uh, on the community. So there is, in that sense, no such thing as a purely a community context. You know, that may be uh, uh, not very uh, commonly found. Uh, there is also, uh, so this, this is a kind of a gap in what one may call the conceptual integrity of this model that, that there is bound to be that type of uh, influence from other sources. The in intervention could be funded both vertically, uh, by both vertically linked organizations which are hierarchical in nature and uh, you know follow a top-down approach or by other organizations which one can connect with horizontally. So there is very clearly that type of an influence as well. Uh, the second uh, dilemma one may come across is you know, of uh, policy participation in social planning. Uh, with regard to policy participation in social planning, uh, the dilemma would be the inclusion of the element of participation in the planning process. So, um, uh, you know, is there, uh, is there scope for uh, communities and constituencies to participate? Uh, certain planning processes actually make a claim and seek to involve communities and uh, key constituencies very actively. And so they talk about participatory planning. So uh, actually, who gets included? Who does not get included? These would be some of the questions that would emerge in such a process. And the inclusion of uh, uh, substantive and ancillary participation, again, conceptually, it dilutes the features of the social planning model because participation of the community may be kept minimal under the social planning model. So if social planning model emphasizes the role of experts and those with a certain kind of domain knowledge, um, and then it allows for community participation, then it moves away from being purely technocratic, and it then incorporates other model, uh, the other features of, uh, it incorporates features of other models. In regard to social action, 
you uh, one of the dilemmas is the complex engagement of numerous factors okay so there are three dimensions that lend complexity to this model of social action uh, the first is that uh, radical change which is considered necessary for bringing about fundamental alteration in society and its structure it's a narrow framework uh, i mean uh, even a subtle change can result in a fundamental alteration so all change all uh, all uh, uh, significant change does not really need to come from radical measures it can also come from measures that may be incremental in nature um secondly the concerned client constituency for such a mode they've also become porous and expansive so originally uh, the social action model was designed to organize i mean was aimed at a uh, discussion of organizing the disadvantaged and mar marginalized groups to raise their voices now you find that such models are also being used by political parties and landlords and and uh, other uh, you know uh, groups that are relatively more powerful in the larger uh, context of development processes so uh, what you see increasingly is in a sense an uh, adoption of the language of participation and uh, struggle and protest and working for uh, working through more radical tactics an adoption of all of these through an adoption of all of these by uh by constituencies and sections of population which are more much more powerful uh in the larger scheme of things so uh this this may work to the uh disadvantage of other sections of the population but uh, uh perhaps this is a point that we will not get into at right now uh with regard to social action the other question is that you know the tactics that were used uh, in the conventional social action intervention mode were aggressive and ass assertive so you're talking more about direct action uh, here now negotiation consensus building uh, data based research are preferred tactics to organize communities so what we're saying here is that you know uh, social action although it uh, communicates the ideological essence of being very radical in nature actually also has a very procedural side to it where you use legal means available uh, you know uh, recourse to action through available legal means to bring about the change that you want and what we must recognize is the fact that all of these strategies and all of these approaches in community organization are actually uh, also uh, they and they actually hinge on who the practitioners are so if you're talking about people who are distant from uh, the the affected constituencies and the disadvantaged population their willingness to engage in direct action may be may be limited so who is willing to use what type of strategy is an important question that we must consider because uh, the the strategies the radical nature of the strategies or the more procedural nature of of these each of these strategies uh, actually uh, emerges because of who the practitioners are their own background social economic background orientation their experiences their belief in systems systems that have worked for them or systems that may not have worked for them so it's really the identity of the practitioner and their organization also shapes what kind of approach is actually adopted so while we have talked about these three models of community organization practice for the study of these models and for future study of other models we must bear in mind the fact that you know practitioners uh, there is subjectivity in all of practice and practitioners have views they have values they have beliefs and these determine the direction of the choices that they, that they make so over time these three models which were initially formulated as self contained and ideal type they be become more flexible and overlapping and there is uh, now a growing need for multi dimensional community community practice approaches rather than rigid frameworks that forcibly categorize community practice methods um com community practitioners therefore must be alert to the need for transitioning from one mode to another at the appropriate time 
and always keeping in view the best interests of the communities that they work with. Uh, the last point that uh, must be made here is that today as we study models of community practice, we will need to recognize the fact that the overall context of community organization has undergone a significant shift in the last few decades. So uh, in the context of globalization, uh, changing, uh, changing identity of communities, fragmentation of communities, increasing, increasing atomization of lives of people, you know, what type of social planning would you actually see? What is the scope for social planning where uh, there is a dilution of the welfare state and social planning as a model is uh, situation, situated very closely with the well, idea of the welfare state and service provision to, uh, to citizens. Now, where there's a dilution of the welfare state itself, what is the kind of social planning that we are actually talking about? Where social action, uh, um, you know, sees severe action, I mean, where democ democratic framework is, um, uh, is being transformed gradually in terms of the spaces available for protest, the spaces avail uh, available for questioning, what is the type of social action that actually is possible, feasible, and, uh, and you know, actually can be engaged in by people where communities themselves are uh, in certain contexts actually being dismantled, where there is a large scale migration of people, forced migration of people, where communities are being broken and rebuilt by new housing projects and, and such projects. What type of locality development would you actually see? So as you proceed with the study of community organization practice, you must keep this point in mind that, you know, what is the context in which you're trying to understand all of this literature on community organization and, and the fact that the context will deeply and really influence the scope of work that is possible for you. So the references for this lesson are uh, included in the e-text that is given to you. Thank you.